Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be comparing two numbers. We have 24 factorial squared and 24 to the power 24, and we're going to find out which number is larger. And we're going to be looking at a couple different things. So, first of all, let's consider 24 factorial. What is that equal to? By definition, 24 factorial is the product of 24 consecutive integers, the largest one being 24, the smallest one being 1. So you can kind of think of it as a product of 24 times 23 dot 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 all the way down to 3, 2, 1. So it's a product and 24 to the power 24 is also a product but this time instead of reducing the numbers every time you use the same number over and over. Now when you compare these two things, I know we're not going to compare them, that's not the goal, but if you just check these two products you hopefully realize that every term in the second product or every factor is greater than or equal to each factor in the first product. In other words, 24 is greater than this number, 24 is greater than all these numbers, with the exception of being greater than or equal to 24. So we can safely say that 24 to the power 24 is greater than 24 factorial. The question is, if we take the smaller number, 24 factorial, and square it, multiply by itself, is the inequality still preserved? Let's find out. So let's go ahead and expand 24 factorial as follows, and we're going to square this obviously. So let's go ahead and expand 24 factorial squared. First of all, I'm going to write it as 24, 23, dot, 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 3, 2, 1. And I'm just going to copy the same thing, 3, 2, 1. So I have the same thing twice. And now I want to pair these up in an interesting way, in a nice way. Take the first term and the last term and write it as 24 times 1. Make it a group. And then take the 23 and multiply by 2. That's going to be another group and use grouping symbols. And we'll continue this manner all the way down to 1 and 24. That's going to be our last pair, dot, 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 1 and 24. Notice that each of these factors is different. And starting with the 24 times 1, we get the smallest. And then they get larger, larger, larger. In the middle somewhere, we're going to be getting 13 times 12. And then 12 times 13, of course, it's always going to be repeated and then it's going to get um, smaller again, okay? So that's 24 factorial squared, and we want to compare this to 24 to the power 24, which is basically the product of 24, 24s, right? So since the top one has more terms or factors, I group them as pairs so that we can compare them like this. I'm going to compare the, this product to 24, this product to 24, and this product to 24, and everything else in between, okay? So, what does that mean? So here, I want to compare 24 times 1 to 24. What do you think happens? Obviously, 24 times 1 is 24, which is greater than or equal to 24. Let's look at the second group. This is my first group, and this is my second group. Second group is even better because 23 times 2 is 46, which is definitely greater than 24. But I can write it as greater than or equal to because if A is greater than B, then A is greater than or equal to B. Not necessarily the other way around because they could be equal, right? So, continue in this manner all the way down to 1 times 24. And notice that every number is repeated because 24 factorial is squared. And obviously, this is going to be greater than or equal to again, right? So here's the thing. All of these are greater than or equal to signs. Actually, only two of them need to be greater than or equal to because the other ones can just be greater than signs. So let's go ahead and change them, starting with the second one. This is greater than, and the one before that is 2 times 23. It's also going to be greater than 24. And notice that when I multiply all these inequalities, the numbers on the left-hand side will definitely be, as a product, will definitely be larger than the numbers on the right-hand side, which means 24 factorial 
squared is greater than 24 to the power 24. Obviously, they're not the same, so there's no way they can be equal, right? That's definitely uh, not a choice. So we found the largest number, the larger number, which is 24 factorial. So if it's not squared, it's less than 24 to 24, but when it's squared, it's going to get much larger. I'm going to show you the numerical values in a little bit. Let's go ahead and take a look at something else. Now, we can write this in general form, can't we? So in general form, this is going to look like the following, n factorial squared versus n to the power n. And by comparison, we found that n factorial squared is larger. But is it always true for all values? Is it always going to work? For example, if I take one factorial and square it, and then compare it to 1 to the power 1, obviously these two things are going to be equal. Or if I have 2 factorial squared, which is 2 to the second, and compare it to 2 to the 2, again they are going to be equal, which is kind of interesting, right? And then 3 factorial cubed is 6 to the third power, which is 216. And then on the other hand, I have 3 to the third, which is 27. Uh-oh. This is definitely going to be much, much larger. As you can see, it grows pretty fast. Factorials grow fast. And when you square them, they're going to grow like crazy. Okay, just to give you an idea what the numerical values are, this number is about 3.8 times 10 to the power 47. I think I'm going to show you the results from Wolfram Alpha as well. And this number is 1.3 times 10 to the power 33. So one number is 10 to the power 14 about... 10 to the power 14 times larger, and I think that is greater than a trillion, right? Anyways, factorials are huge. But let's go and look at something else now. What would happen if I divided, instead of comparing them like this, if I divided n to the power n by n factorial squared? Of course, you know that the, the bottom one is larger, right? And then kind of make a series out of this and add n equals 1 through infinity. Would this diverge or converge? And we can actually find out by using by using what is called ratio test. A ratio test basically tells us the following. You take the limit as n approaches infinity of a n plus 1 over a n. By the way, a n is just a general term. And take the absolute value. If this limit is less than 1, then we have a convergent series. If it's greater than 1, if it's, it's divergent, if it's one, inconclusive. Too bad. You have to use another test, right? So let's find out. Uh, this is going to give us basically as limit n approaches infinity. To keep a long story short, you can do this, right? A n plus 1 is just going to be n plus 1 to the power n plus 1 divided by n plus 1 factorial squared. And then the other one is going to be flipped and multiplied like n factorial squared divided by n to the power n. And you can kind of expand this. There's a square. Don't forget about that. And kind of look at the limit. And let me tell you something. This limit is actually going to be 0. When you take the limit, this, and this is less than 1, therefore, this series is going to converge. But does that help with the comparison? Hopefully it does. Let me know what you think. Anyways, that was just a quick bonus piece. And as you can see, the 24 to 24 is a very large number. But... Our factorial squared is much, much larger. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe. Take care and bye-bye.